Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This is part 35 and it's called Making Studs. If you build steam engines you do need to make studs fairly frequently and this is how to do it. I'm going to show how I make the studs for my steam engine projects. Obviously a stud needs a thread at both ends but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm only going to thread one end. And the first thing to do as usual is to face the end. The next step is to decide how much of the stud needs to be threaded. Sometimes this is the same at both ends, but in some cases the length of thread is different at both ends. For the demonstration, the thread on this stud is going to be a quarter of an inch long. This piece of stainless steel bar is 4 millimeters or 5 30 seconds of an inch. But this size is too large a diameter to directly cut a thread on it using a 4BA die. So I need to reduce the diameter of the part of the bar I want to thread to a size that will allow me to thread it 4BA. So how much do I take off? There are two ways to do this. You can do it the way I'm doing it. Take a commercial 4BA machine bolt, measure the outside diameter with the micrometer, and turn the quarter inch part of the steel bar to exactly the same diameter as the external threads on this 4BA bolt. Or you can consult a chart to find out the size it's supposed to be, and as a beginner, get mixed up with all the numbers and do it wrong. I much prefer sampling the diameter of a commercial BA bolt. And why? because it's quicker. Now it's time to machine the end of the piece of bar to the felt tip pen line. I was curious to find out exactly what the diameter was of the piece of steel bar in the chuck. And even though I bought it as 532nd steel bar, it's actually four millimeters. So armed with this knowledge and being much wiser, it's time to start machining the part. I don't find making studs very stressful because if you make a mess of it, you just make another. Not like some model engineering jobs where you've done a lot of work on the part, you're on the final step and you make a mess of it. But that doesn't apply to this very simple job. The micrometer tells me that the part is the right diameter. If anything, it's a bit tight. So now I'm going to cut the piece of bar all the way down to the felt tip pen line. I am in actual fact going to turn the bar until I can't see the felt tip pen line anymore. And no, I haven't lost my mind, well, not recently anyway. There is a good reason for doing this, and I'll show that and explain it shortly. For the next job, you need a tailstock die holder. This is my improvised tailstock die holder that holds commercial die holders. By using this principle, I can have a die ready fitted into a die holder. Anything that saves time is good. In my lifetime, I've spent far too much time on sex, drugs, rock and roll, and fitting dies very carefully into tailstock die holders. When I think about what I've just said, there wasn't that much sex and there certainly was hardly any drugs, but I did spend a lot of time fitting and adjusting dies into tailstock die holders. And in my career, I really did spend a lot of time playing music from rock and roll to jazz. Here's the thread, but there is a problem. I've exaggerated this on purpose for the video. When you thread up to a shoulder with a die, because the leading edge of the die is tapered, you can't get all the way up to the shoulder. So when you finish cutting the thread up to the shoulder, you turn the die round and cut it from the other end because this end is flat and it will cut right up to the shoulder. How do you tell when it hits the shoulder? Well, very suddenly it becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to continue turning it. I do most of the jobs in model engineering, music and more or less everything that I do by something called feel. I don't think that's something that can be taught, although you can achieve it by practicing a lot. All you need is plenty of patience. Here you see the finished thread. It's cut more or less all the way up to the shoulder and it's looking good. Now I'm pushing the stud into the chuck, just leaving the threaded part exposed. What I'm doing here, using a round nose tool, is coning the end, putting a bit of a cone on the end of the stud. And that's why I turned the piece of bar slightly longer than the quarter of an inch that I needed to allow for the coning of the end. And here is the finished product complete with a nut on the end of it. I also made a 2BA stud. The principle of operation is exactly the same as I've just shown for any size of stud. You can actually make them even neater by using a very small parting tool to sharpen up the division between the thread and the shaft. But really the way I do it is adequate for the job. Here are a set of four studs that I prepared earlier. These are from my series, A Vintage Traction Engine Restoration. 
and the use for securing the top bearing of the crankshaft onto the bottom bearing. I used my normal system of fitting studs. First of all, put a lock nut on another nut on the stud itself, and when you remove the lock nut, the finished job looks like this. That's it for this episode. You should now have no difficulty whatsoever making studs for your steam engines. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.